we're going to solve a skydiver simulation with Gecko, a dynamic optimization package that is in Python. So first of all, we want to read the problem statement and predict the trajectory of this skydiver as he jumps out of the airplane. And at a certain point, he's going to pull the parachute cord and the parachute's going to release and then increase his drag coefficient. So we have two dimensions we want to simulate, just in the x and y direction. y is the vertical and x is the horizontal. We want to predict the position and the velocity of the skydiver as it goes through these two dimensions. Uh, from an initial jump through the first 90 seconds. And at 60 seconds after the jump, the skydiver pulls the chute cord and the drag coefficient increases to slow the descent. The airplane is flying at a constant altitude of 5,000 meters and 50 meters per second when the skydiver jumps. The drag coefficient is 0.2 newton second squared per meter squared while free falling and 10 newton second squared per meter squared when the par with the parachute open. The gravitational constant, we can assume that is 9.8 meters per second squared and the mass is 80 kilograms for the skydiver and the chute. So let's develop our equations and then we'll work on simulating this and then discuss some of the simulation results. So we have Gecko. Um, you know, we're going to use this one, but first of all, let's go ahead and just write our equations, and then those will be the differential equations that we insert into Gecko. So the very first one is just the position uh, x with respect to time is going to be equal to the velocity x. The position in the y direction is going to be, uh, we're going to write another differential equation, dy dt equals velocity y. Those are just the definition of the change in distance with respect to time is equal to the velocity. Okay, and then the next one we have is going to be the, uh, we have a drag in the x direction as we travel in that direction. So what we're going to do now is uh, just write um, the momentum balance so we have mass times our acceleration. This is dvx dt. And that's going to be equal to our drag coefficient times vx squared. OK, and then we also have one for the y direction. But in addition to the, uh, you know, in addition to the drag, we also have the downward force of gravity. So let's go ahead and write that one for the y direction as well. Um, we're going to have m times dvy dt is going to be the same thing that we had before, dvy squared. Okay, but that's going to be in the positive because we're going to have the, um, you know, we're jumping out of the airplane. And um, we're just going to find uh, positive as being up and um, positive as also being forward. Okay, so we have the y direction and the x direction, and these are the positives for those. So the drag is going to be having a force that pushes up on the, uh, the skydiver to... Uh, basically balance the gravitational force, the mass times the uh, gravitational constant there. Okay, and so when those are equal, then you'll have no more change in the velocity. You'll be at steady state, so that'll be equal to zero. We'll let the, um, the solution come up with when that is going to equilibrate. Okay, and then the very final thing that we have is we need to relate the velocity in the x direction to the velocity in the y direction. And um, we'll go ahead and just do that with um, the velocity squared equals velocity x squared plus velocity y squared. Okay, so we have these five equations and five variables. The five variables that we have are the x and y position. Okay, x, y, velocity in the x direction, velocity in the y direction 
and then also the overall velocity. So we have these five variables. We have these five equations right here. Now we want to implement those and solve them. And we're let's just go ahead and do this with Gecko. So I'll just go ahead and move uh, this off to the side. And we'll have our equations right here as we develop this. And we have some other information in there as well about uh, what time, at what time things change. You know, at 60 seconds, the uh, shoot opens. So we'll include that in here as well. Very first thing that we need to do is just import Gecko. And uh, if you don't have that, you can do pip install Gecko. And then import NumPy as well. We'll also do matplotlib because we're going to want to plot some of the results. Next thing we want to do is number of time points for the discretization. Gecko supports a simultaneous solution for differential and algebraic equations. We're going to have 91 points. Basically, we'll have 91 uh, seconds going from 0 to 90. And so we'll just include 91 to get the endpoints there. Okay, we'll initialize the model. We'll say m equals gecko. And then we'll define the time discretization. Now, m equals uh, m dot time. We're going to define within our object m, we're going to define the time vector. And so we're going to define a linearly spaced values between 0 and 90, and we'll have 91 points. And then we'll make an array of drag coefficients. So this is changes at time 60. So we're going to have these 91 points you know, for t in m dot time. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and put some parentheses around there, and we'll make that uh, conditional. If the time is less than 60, it's going to be 0.2, else it's going to be equal to 10 for the, all the times in m dot time. So that's going to create a new array of uh, values that are going to go from 0.2 to 10 at time equals 60. Okay, let's go ahead and start initializing some of the constants. We have the gravitational constant. I'll put 9.81 for that. And then the mass, we had 80 kilograms. We also have the drag parameter as well. This is uh, the one that we want to initialize with the drag vector that we just created. And so we'll say value equals drag. That just seems to be the same number of points as in m dot time. We have some other variables that we want to initialize. This is how you initialize one variable, x equals m dot var. And let's say you want to give it a value of 0 initially. But if you want to initialize many of them, so for example, I'm going to initialize, um, in addition to uh, those five that we had identified, we're also going to do the force in the x in y direction, Okay, just to be able to simplify some of the expressions. And then I had, uh, you know, just initializing all seven of these. I had, you know, value equals zero for i in range seven. So I'm initializing all seven of those variables, giving them default values of zero. Okay, and then I can change some of the initial conditions. My y dot value is going to be equal to 5,000. Okay, and that's the elevation of the airplane when the skydiver jumps. And the velocity in the x direction is 50 meters per second. Okay, here are some of the equations. We'll add these as well. We have our momentum balance, which translates into a, for, a balance of forces. And we have the force in the x direction. Okay, Fx. Okay, force in the y direction. Those are just the right-hand sides of the equation. And then we have force equals mass times acceleration. Okay, and then I just put those, uh, you can put the differentials on the right or left hand side of the equation. To get the differential, you do dot uh, dt with the open and close parentheses. That's the differential. And then also for the y. So let's do the velocity correlation as well. We had uh, vx equals x dot dt with the open and close parentheses. And then also for y. And then total velocity as well. One thing I noticed with this is that I rearranged this to be velocity equals 
and then I had the uh, you know the velocity x squared plus velocity y squared, and I I basically rearranged this and took the square root. Uh, so if you look at this equation uh, right here, I basically just took the square root of both sides, and then that equals velocity instead. So that helped it solve a little bit better, um, but you should be able to do it either way. Uh, but just for the IPOP solver, this form of the expression worked better than the original one. Okay, so let's go ahead and just continue on with this. Uh, we want to just set some global options. This is the I mode equals four. That's just the mode of simulation. This is mo I mode four is dynamic simulation. And then we want to solve it. Now you can either choose to solve it locally to your computer or you can solve it over an internet connection. And so I'm going to say remote equals true to be able to solve it on a publicly available server. If you want to say remote equals false, then you need to have the local executable there. Uh, that um, And that is available for download right now for Windows and um, shortly for the, uh, the Linux. Mac is not quite available yet. Okay, plot some results. Uh, we're going to do plt.figure and basically just plot our x and y values. And let me go ahead and just... Um, yeah, I'm just going to, the figures that we created here, just generate three different figures to be able to look at some of the results. And there we have the end of our script. So I'm going to run this now. <clears throat> okay, and I'll open it up with IDLE. <clears throat> and then run it, and then we'll see some of the plots that are created. Okay, so it, it solved these. Let me go over, I pasted these into <clears throat> this, um, okay, let me go ahead and just full screen on this, and then we'll look at some of the plots that were created. So the very first one is just the trajectory of the skydiver in the y and x direction, so jumping out of a plane that's moving at 50 meters per second. And then you can see the effect of gravity as the skydiver begins to fall. It's still traveling in the forward direction, but there is a drag coefficient in the x and y direction. We're assuming that the you know skydiver is a sphere, but uh, in reality, it's gonna he's gonna have or she is gonna have uh, different drag coefficient in different directions. Okay, so we're just making an approximation here. And at this point right here, the Skydiver opens a chute and then begins to fall more slowly. So let's look at another plot just to see how that turns out. We have the y direction right there. Okay, so you can see the elevation with time. And then at a certain point, the chute opens and the skydiver falls more slowly. And then you can also see the x direction. Okay, and uh, so the skydiver is going forward but then only goes about, you know, maybe 900, uh, you know, meters beyond where the skydiver started and then kind of levels out in the X direction even before the chute opened, okay? So at this point, the chute opens at 60 seconds and you can see some of the dynamics change there. And the final one is the velocity in the X and Y direction. So you can see the velocity in the x direction was already decreasing towards zero. Okay, but then when the chute opens, the velocity decreases even faster towards zero. And then you can also see the velocity in the y direction as the skydiver jumps. The skydiver accelerates downward. You've got a, a velocity. And then at this point, it reaches, skydiver reaches a terminal velocity of about negative 70 meters per second. And then when the chute opens, the skydiver uh, decelerates and reaches a steady state fall, fall rate, um, you know, maybe about five meters per second. Okay, so that's the velocity, the position, and the X and Y two-dimensional trajectory of the skydiver as the skydiver went down. Just to review, we've solved uh, these five differential equations and a couple 
uh, or not all differential equations, they're differential and algebraic equations with Gecko, which is a Python package. You can also solve this using uh, MATLAB or uh, APM Python, uh, although I do recommend this Python Gecko. Uh, there's some more documentation here. If you go to this address for Gecko, you can see some of the more, uh, some of the additional features and other uh, help there with the simulation package.